Today, we're gonna take you on a tour of Auschwitz-Birkenau. We're gonna show you what not to do. Going into this, we had no idea what we were doing. We wasted a lot of time and money. We booked our tour through Get Your Guide. Which in hindsight, we should have just done a self-guided tour, which is completely free. The tour guide was great. They provided some really good information. And we saw several other museums that we would have not normally have seen. However, the main attraction is both Auschwitz 1 and 2 for Canal. And so you can visit those for free in a self-guided fashion after 4 p.m. We're at Auschwitz. If you do the tour, you have to, you're stuck with the group for about 17, 20 hours. So we did that. We left uh, this morning at uh, 0, 0200. And then you're on a bus ride for about, you leave from Krakow for about an hour and 20 minutes. And then you have access to the bus. So you can put your food and stuff. You have to make sure and bring your lunch. And then you get a book. One hour later, still One in line. Later. Still what waiting the, for our tickets. What was this tour called? Let's get your guide. So we asked what guide or what that? Only an hour and a half later, 11.07. We left at 8.20 this morning. So we stood in line and got our tickets and then we went to go into the museum and we were denied and they said that we couldn't get in until 4 because they were free tickets, the non-guided and so we were very confused and then we found out everybody was getting back on the bus and she said that we're going to go see the other museums first and then come back at 4 because then it's free for anyone to get in to Auschwitz. So something we would do in the future is just come at four and get in for free. Uh, Mr. Zachary Gopin. That was my bad. Yeah. Oh well. All our food is supposed to last until 7.30 tonight. It's 11. We've already gone through half of it. Let's go look at sandwich though. Oh yeah. <laughs> we are going to the museum uh, before we get to go to Auschwitz and it was what happened before World War II and then after World War II. All right. We have until 1 o'clock to be back on the bus, so we got a little tired, so we came out to find a nice oak tree to lie under. Got a little ways to go until we get to go to the part we wanted to go to. We're walking up to one of the original, original carts they used to transport the Jews to this area. women's sub camp. It's one of the smaller camps that surrounds Auschwitz and Birkenau. 200 women lived in this tiny home and it was a camp, a penal camp, that they went to and worked uh, separate from the main camps around this area. I guess there were allegedly 40 some camps around this area that were in addition to the two main ones. So we are at the next stop, which is lunch, and it was a little confusing. You can order up there, or you can have a seat at a table, which we didn't know, so it was a bit of a clue there. We know that there's bathrooms here, but there's not bathrooms prior other than the museum. So if you have to go, go to the museum, because you won't have a chance for about another hour or so. So, so we just arrived at Birkenau, which is one of the two main camps here near the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camps from World War II. And so we're about to go inside. Uh, we're walking out back to get our tickets because the tickets that we picked up this morning are actually required for entry into to the memorial. Just row after row after row. Just, just wild. Think about. What did they say, 1,200 volts? Yeah. In each one of those 
on this fence here, so people would literally throw themselves. Toilet room. Yeah, and these holes. See these? This is a living barrack for prisoners, adapted from a German army field horse stable. In such barracks, planned originally for 51 horses, over that? 400 prisoners were placed. Closing in the film Chronicle of the Liberation of Auschwitz in 1945. They said eight people would sleep mm -hmm. on each level of these bunk beds. And this is where 700 would be? 700 people. 400? Oh, the signs said 400? Okay. I do remember hearing that. I do remember that too. It was a lot. So they must have gone. That that's the watchtower? Yeah. It's so hard to fathom. We haven't even got to the part that is where you're gonna really see and feel. I mean, just being here is like, such a heaviness going into those rooms. Thinking about how many people were packed in, I I cannot I cannot comprehend it. It's disgusting, and I just don't know how you could ever treat another human being like that. Yeah. It's really sad. What's crazy is looking over here, these were all uh, the same bunk houses. And it, out they, here. they just keep going and going and going. Yeah. And then all the chimneys, right? And then over there. So as well. Yeah. It's it's pretty wild. You can see here the gas chambers and crematoria two and three at Auschwitz-Birkenau Killing Center. On November 25th, 1944, as the Soviet forces continue to approach, the SS chief Heinrich Himmler orders the destruction of Auschwitz-Birkenau gas chambers and crematoria. During the SS attempt to destroy the evidence of mass killings, prisoners were forced to dismantle and dynamite these structures. Is that down there? Yeah. Oh, oh good no, enough, are we on the wrong side? Yeah. Oh shoot. That's our shuttle so bus. the shuttle bus takes you then over to Auschwitz. Oh. From Brickenau. Going on the shuttle bus. Going on the shuttle bus. So Taylor's the shuttle bus master. Yes. So join us at Auschwitz. We'll be there in a minute. Trouble. After making our way through the main entrance of Auschwitz I, there are a series of memorials and plaques dedicated to those that lost their lives during the Holocaust. Work makes free. That's what they were told. Yeah, so we're just walking in the uh, work makes free gate into Auschwitz. We get the headphones because we're really lost and we're not sure how to find the... I, know, I wonder what it looks like inside. Auschwitz I, the main camp, was the location of the SS Garrison Administration, the main headquarters for the SS, as well as the main supply stores, workshops, and SS companies.
This is where the Camp Gestapo was located. Prisoners suspected of involvement in the camp's underground resistance movement or of preparing to escape were interrogated here. Many prisoners died as a result of being beaten or tortured. The first commandant of Auschwitz, SS Oberstand von Führer, who was tried and sentenced to death after the war by the Polish Supreme National Tribunal, was hanged here on 16 April 1947. We abandoned the bus idea. We're just gonna catch an Uber yeah. back to the city. We'd have to wait another hour and a half and we're ready to get going. Yeah, so we started the day this morning. We arrived at the meeting point at 8.20. Well, we were there actually there about 20, 30 minutes early. So just a little bit before eight. And then we weren't expected to get home until 9.30 <laughs> tonight. That's a, that's a long day. So just be prepared for that if you go with Get Your Guide. Great guide, company, everything so as advertised, but long day. Yeah. All right, well, we hope you enjoyed this tour of Auschwitz. If you have any questions. In Birkenau, in the, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, if you have any questions, because we had a lot of questions that we were not able to get answered. So uh, if you have any questions, write them in the comments down below and we will get back to you with everything to help your trip go super smooth. Ours was a little rocky. So, but for, if we ever come back, we will know exactly what to do. So hopefully you will too.